Hello, my name is Joe. I'm a real fan of Jean-Paul Riopel. And today, I'd like to tell you about him and his relationship to the team of the earth. There is a widely shared understanding among indigenous people, the original inhabitants of this land, that the earth does not belong to humans, rather, it is humans who belong to the earth. For example, the Yuhan Wendat creation story tells us, one day, a woman who was with her child fell from Sky World. Seeing what was happening, the great turtle caught her. With the help of the other animals, the turtle saved the woman. She then gave birth to the earth, Mother Earth, which then brought forth all of the creatures. In this story, the earth deserves our respect. It isn't we who live on the earth. It is the places and territories in which we live that leave the marks on us. This is something Jean-Paul learned early on. As a teenager, his father brought him to a presentation by Archibald Bellini, also called Grey Owl, an English naturalist who had been fascinated with the first people in North America since his youth. Having immigrated in Canada as a young man, Bellini went to go live with the Achibwa people in Northern Ontario, joining the community and eventually adopting their identity presenting himself as Washua Kwan Asin, which means Grey Owl. A legendary figure, Grey Owl used his indigenous identity and dedicated himself to defending the earth and its animals, especially the beavers. He had a profound influence on Jean-Paul. Jean-Paul's passion for indigenous culture grew even greater while living in France. His surrealist friends were avid collectors of masks created by the Yupik, the Kwakwakiwak, and Tinglet people of the Pacific coast of Alaska and British Columbia. Jean-Paul grew interested, and as a man of culture, read deeply on the subject. His reading included two texts of Inuit culture, Les Jeux de Ficelle, Les Arviliques Joirmiut, String Figures of the Arviliques Joirmiut by Guy-Marie Rousselière, and The Last Kings of Thule by Jean-Marie Lorry. The titles given to many of Riopel's work bear witness to his interest for indigenous lands and languages, such as Mi'kmaq, an Algonquian language, and Muscoequan, an Ojibwe First Nation in Western Canada.